The following is paid programming. It's time to talk taxes. New friends, new opportunities, new partners. EG Tax. It's Ask the Tax Lady with Esther Gullius and EG Tax on News Radio 930 WBEN. To reach Esther now, call 803 0930. Toll free at 1 800 616 9236. And cell calls are free at Star 930. And now, live from the WBEN studios, it's Esther Gullius. Hey, everybody, this is the tax lady, and this is our hour to talk taxes. And you know everybody's talking taxes because of the proposed major changes in the tax law. And I'm joined in studio with Tiffany Fabian and Christopher Fabian. Hey there, Esther. How goes it? Happy Good. Saturday. Happy Saturday. And I just wanted to thank... Uh, Mike and uh, Glenn, um, who are the financial guys, uh, for inviting us to the Super Forum. We had all kinds of wonderful people that were in our two sessions that we did, and it was just, uh, it was just remarkable. It's always great to be with people and get that automatic feedback, yes. right? Yep. I, I yep. think we opened up a lot of eyes Yeah, Yeah, I hope so. Hope so. Anyway, uh, we want to talk about, uh, and again, we invite your phone calls, 8030930, 8030930, star 930, and a cell phone. We uh, invite your comments, what you're, what you think about with the change in the tax law. Obviously, we want, it didn't happen yet. So this is just, uh, the Senate had come up with a proposal. Uh, no, there was Trump's proposal, now the House of Representatives proposal. It's going to go to the Senate, and if you have any questions now's the time to ask because hopefully if we clarified for you you'd be able to um, talk to your representative your congressman your senator about what they're proposing so that because uh, once it's passed it's passed right uh, so that's uh, again 8030930 8030930 star 930 cell phone again uh, this is the time of year for uh, before we get into that subject uh, people doing uh, oh. Health insurance, yep. right? Yep, yep, yep. It's open enrollment time. So if you have Medicare or you're on the marketplace, if you have Medicare, now's your time to look at your plan B to see if you have too much coverage, not enough coverage. Yeah, that's, we were talking the other day about, you know, if this is why it's important, especially people that are on fixed incomes, right? Right. And who isn't on a fixed income of some type? Uh, if you're over contributing to a supplemental plan, like for instance, if you're on Medicare, mm -hmm. That's like buying a, a Rolls Royce and sticking it in your front yard and you're making payments on it, but you don't use it. So you want to make sure that you make everything so it's appropriate so right. that you're getting benefit for it, right? That's, that's right. That's right. You got to, you know, do your medical inventory. See what's the best thing for you. What prescriptions you're on. Are you doing a hip replacement? Are you doing a, you know, whatever. Got to get it all ready so you can pick the right choice. Right. Because there's no sense in paying too much and 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 getting what you don't need. Or don't not pay have for right the enough. jack when you can buy a Chevy. All right, and then uh, the other thing we wanted to talk about is if you need health. You know, obviously we we mentioned it a couple weeks ago. They will not take your tax return this year if you send it electronically or you mail it in paper unless you deal with the health insurance portion. So if you didn't have health insurance, you gotta pay the penalty this year. Or they won't take the tax return. Right, or or do an exception to not have it if you qualify for one of those exceptions which is really important and then we also have and, and when but we help people to find the right yeah we do we absolutely do and there's no charge tim eliason does that uh we also i'm very excited we have a new location this year it's in lewiston on cayuga street and um, the owner is david mickey and uh, we're very excited. He's having an open house on January 6, 2018. Um, but he's there for your assistant in Lewiston. All right. So I'm going to say it here. Let's say you go into work Monday and your boss says, I'm doubling your salary. Mm -hmm. And you go, oh, my gosh, you're doubling my salary. And then he says to you, oh, but by the way, we're not charging uh, ninety percent of your salary to park in the parking lot, or maybe a hundred percent of your salary to park in the parking lot. That's kind of what's being proposed when they're talking about doubling your standard deduction, or, right? Or maybe a hundred and ten. They're doubling your standard deduction, but they're per taking away your personal exemptions. Yeah. So your personal exemption that people don't know about right now, you got a standard deduction of filing a joint return of thirteen thousand dollars. 
Yeah. And you get a personal and you get a standard and you get a personal exemption of 4150 for you, 4150 for your wife, 4150 for your kids, each one of your kids and any other your, of your dependents. So if if you're a family of four, your standard deduction of 13,000 uh, was also increased by your personal exemptions of 166. So under the current tax law, you would have deductions of $29,600 if you're a family of four. Now they're eliminating the personal exemption and they're giving you a doubled standard deduction, but you still would be $4,600 more in taxable income if you, when you file and you're going to pay 2% extra for the privilege. Now they're so, going to say, oh, but we're giving $1,600 per kid under the age of 17. But and that's true. But now you get a thousand dollars, and remember, you're losing the forty-one fifty per kid, which in the ten percent bracket would be four thousand four hundred and fifteen dollars. And you're paying two percent on your taxable income, so you're paying more in taxes. So if so, they, it, at best, you're going to make out a little bit. At worst, you're going to end up. Paying uh, some if you're a standard deduction person, but if you're an itemizer, you could pay a lot more. And to me, this is my whole thing. Whatever they do, it should should it should just be the truth. I don't want people thinking they're getting a big Christmas gift when they're not. The truth of the matter is, it's really very beneficial for upper income people, for the average person, the mom that's head of the household, because it looks like they're getting rid of the head of the household standard, uh, status. It looks like single and married joint. These kind of people who are on tight budgets, st uh, seniors now are going to lose the $2,500 increased standard deduction. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it it's so seniors what, actually are behind the eight ball. Wouldn't it be nice if the representatives in the House of Representatives would actually come out and say, here's how we did the math. Look at here's this person who makes $60,000, dot, 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 because we've done it numerous ways for single people, married, joint. Yep. And, we'll, and, and we'll do it. I just had somebody that emailed me and said, I make this much money. How much it, will my taxes be? And I'll compute it out for you. There's no charge for us to do that, but you need to know so you can make some phone calls. All right, let's talk. Two people. We got Mark from Grand Island. Hi, Mark. How can we help you, sir? Well, I just had a, a question more confirmed, but, but I'm already just being under suspicion of is that uh, I'm a single guy. I have a home. I recently bought and upgraded, so my mortgage is quite high. Do you know what your interest payment is in a year? How much interest you're paying? It's going to be around seventeen or eighteen thousand dollars. The interest? Yeah, correct. Okay. And then I have my, you know, and plus that with my state, you know, uh, just other income tax with my county tax and, and other deductions. I was ending up somewhere around the thirty to forty range. You mean thirty to forty thousand in itemized deductions? Correct. Okay. How much are your property taxes? Uh, well, they're around nine, eight thousand dollars. Eight. Yep. Okay. And um, okay. And, and how, are, are how you... much is is your mortgage over five hundred thousand? Correct. Correct. All right. So you're going to be you're going to be capped. Uh, that's if, but that might be. They're saying on houses purchased, new purchases of five hundred thousand. This is a can again, Mark. This is if it goes through. So well, since you already bought the house, it was already before the tax law changed. It wasn't probably. over a million dollars, was it, Mark? I bought, I bought the house back in two thousand three, and I put a, uh, an addition on. It. Okay, that's so you yep. so it, but it isn't over a million dollar mortgage, is it? Oh no, it's not. Okay, so and you're you said you're single. Correct. All right. Now, do you have uh, charitable contributions? Yes, but the you know, with the, how it's, as much as I pay and everything else, it's you know not exactly as high as it could. All right, and and a, okay, so that would mean that under the new law, you would have about twenty five thousand dollars in deductible expenses, as opposed to what did you say thirty five thousand? Thirty to forty. Right before, so that means that you're going to end up with let's say uh, twelve thousand dollars extra taxable income. And so it'll probably cost you about four thousand dollars extra in taxes. So basically, wipe out any return I get. I'm already claiming uh, five on my W four, and still I end up with not, you know, I was getting seven thousand dollars back. Every yeah, well, you certainly don't want a big refund anyway. You know, getting a big refund um, 
uh, is really begging them to give you back your own money. So I would suggest you change your W-4 so you don't get so much of a, of a, of a large refund and take a look at that. But obviously in your situation, um, your New York State taxes won't be deductible. And um, the only thing that's going to be deductible is your home mortgage interest and your property taxes and uh, charities, and that would be it. So you're looking at about an extra, if you figure $12,000 extra taxable at 25%, depending on how much is your income, approximately, Mark? Um, just about two. All right, so at and most of that will be at 25%. So it'll be four to $5,000 extra you'll pay in taxes. Yeah, great. <laughs> Always want to chip in more. Hey, look at you! You got your your congressman's um, phone number, right? Oh, for sure, absolutely. That, that's not a problem. All right, good enough. Make sure you make those phone calls. Thanks, Mark, for calling. Thank you take care. All right, I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back on the other side with your with your questions and comments. We'll see you in a minute. Hey, I'm Esther Golias, the tax lady, and I'm having uh, microphone and earphone problems. But anyway, I'm Esther Golias, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on your cell phone. And we're talking the tax plan that they're proposing because we want you to know, okay? And that's it. I mean, what, what we said today, how many times? Knowledge is power. And, and that is for sure. And I, I'm going to tell you, I mean, if you're a corporation making a million dollar profit, you're going to save $150,000 in taxes. And if you're an S corporation, 140000 in taxes. And that's not, not, not chump and, and, and that's the part when they're talking about it saving lots and lots of and tax dollars. And it is dollars. the biggest tax break yeah. in history. <laughs> but it isn't for the average guy. Let's go back to the phones. We're going to talk to Gina. Hi, Gina. Hi, Esther. How can we help you, my dear? Well, here's my question. I wanted to know what you think um, the new tax plan, how it's going to affect small business. Now, when I say that, I've been working for an organization. We're the largest advocacy group that lobbies for small business. And my CEO just sent us a letter saying they cannot back this. They didn't say why yet. I'm sure we're going to in the future get it. But I'd like to hear your take because she says it leaves too many small business owners out. Well, well, I will tell you um, the the this law. It, it, you see, the thing the thing is that I I'm not happy about is I have no problem that this is going to be good for be, like bringing business from offshore. That's a good thing. It's good for corporations uh, for for new job opportunity. That's great. The thing is, when they say this is a great thing for middle income people, it's not true. I just want them to tell the truth. And I think it's a shame that they're taking away stuff from the only deductions that were available to the average people, medical expenses, your state withholding. Uh, if you're an outside salesman traveling around from job to job to job, all those office and home is gone. Education expenses for your continuing education and, for your job is gone. And, and I think, you know, so so that's that that's wow. what my problem is. Now, small business, if it's an S corporation, if it's a partnership, if it's um, and it's and what doesn't won't count would be if you are an attorney, um, a self-employed um, accountant, those things where it's basically you making the money that that can't pass through. But those other S corporations, limited partnerships, LLCs, they'll all be taxed at a maximum of 25 percent. So that would help the small business owner, while maybe many of the people working for the small business owner would not be positively affected. So wouldn't you say it depends also if you're a DBA or an S Corp or a C Corp? I think I just said yep. that. Yep. And so I just want to emphasize that. Did you get that, Gina? Yeah, we own five um, rental properties. Okay. Well, you, that would be a pass through. But the thing is, most rental properties are never going to pay over 25% anyway, because uh, the net profit after you take your depreciation and all your expenses usually aren't enough to make you pay more than 25%. So it won't make any difference. Okay. Okay. I'm just trying to understand why she said it's going to leave a lot of small businesses out. Some get 
are going to get better. But I think I think the thing you need to do is ask your CEO what what they're talking about because and just email me at at, at go to egtax.com, email me and I'll email you right back as soon as you get the details. You know that's the trouble when you don't have the details, it's, you can't really give a good answer. Yeah. What What do you think, Chris, about businesses? Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, it all depends on. When small business could be a simple self-employed person, it could mean a corporation. So you got to look at the whole pictures, and they can't just say we can't back this whole thing because of. They got to really state the reason, mm-hmm. and like Esther said, we'll run the give us the reason. Give us and the we'll numbers. You know. We'll run it for you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for your call, Gina. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930. 8030930. You wonder how it's going to affect you? Give us a call. We're happy to talk about it. Don't be misled. When they talk about doubling the standard deduction, they don't mention they're taking away the personal exemptions. So they're giving you it on the left hand side, taking it away on the right hand side. So let's go back to the phones. We're going to talk to Dave. Hey, Dave, how can we help you, sir? Uh, hello there. Uh, I wanted to sort of expand on that point you just you just made again. Yeah. Uh, you lose you lose your personal, but they say they're giving it back on the standard, right? Well, the, this is the whole thing. The standard deduction right now is sixty three hundred if you're single, and thirteen thousand if you're filing a joint return. Sixty five hundred if you're single, and thirteen thousand if you're filing a joint return. To that. The single person adds forty one fifty, and to that the married couple adds eighty three hundred. Okay, so that means that the single person is close to the. Um, They're at uh, about ten five. Yeah, the, is at at about ten five, and the and the married couple's about twenty one three. So they're close to what they're giving them. But if the couple have children, the forty one fifty for each child or any other dependents don't get added in there plus there there so let's say that you're ending up with an about 2% less and more in deductions on both of these situations if you don't itemize but the bottom rate increased by 2%. So if you're paying taxes at $40,000, your the tax went up $800. So you are saving Two hundred dollars on the left hand side, but it's costing you eight hundred dollars on the right hand side, and that's and, the thing. And, and if I can say, if you have raised the standard deduction so much, in order to itemize, you have to beat the standard deduction, and nobody, when you double it, is going to be able to right. beat that standard right. deduction. Right. So when they nobody talk about, oh yay, they're going to let us take our property taxes, mo- it won't make any difference because the standard deduction is so high. So whereas people would have gotten at thirteen thousand, they could have added all those property taxes. And come up to maybe twenty one thousand dollars itemizing, and to that add an eighty three hundred dollars standard deduction. Now they're up to thirty thousand. Now they're limited to twenty four. So the reason why I called is because people are not going to understand that if they don't do their own do their own taxes and they're not familiar with this. Right. Well, that's why I'm trying, Dave. Well, now they're now they're talking about whether we can deduct our state income taxes. For most people in the middle class, it's not going to make any difference. It won't make any difference because nobody's going to uh, let's I mean, looking at this realistically, let's just say that somebody's got property taxes of eight thousand dollars and state income taxes of six. So they've got 14 and let's say their mortgage interest is 10. So now they're at twenty four thousand. OK, the standard deduction is twenty four thousand. So. Twenty four from twenty four is zero, so there's going to be no benefit. And then they lose their personal exemptions, and, and you've lost your personal exemptions. So okay. there's going to be no benefit. This plan stinks. That's why I called. Okay. Amen. Bye. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a good comment, right? It stinks. True. Well, I mean, for some, if you're a single person, one one exemption, you're going to make out. As a matter of fact, you, I have you some make examples. Out, yep. If you are a single person, fifty thousand dollars in wages. Under the old law, your tax bill would have been fifty six fifteen. Under the new law, it's forty five sixty. So you come out a thousand fifty five ahead. So okay? a single person, no children. Right. But let's say that you're a married joint couple with one child under seventeen and two kids over seventeen. Making seventy five under the old law, after you took the thousand dollar child tax credit, your taxes are forty two sixty four. Under the new law, 
the taxes are 6120 but the the child tax credit is 1600 so the taxes are 4520 so this couple would pay an extra 256 in taxes so every situation is different and what is especially egregious is when somebody like this gentleman was itemizing and they're not able to yep. anymore like for instance you gave an example at the forum about somebody taking money out uh, to pay for medical expenses. Yep. yep. If you have someone in a nursing home, say mom's in a nursing, going into a nursing home, and you have to close out her annuity to pay for the nursing home, well, that's, a, we'll say, $130,000. You are able to take that medical, as the cost in the nursing home as a medical expense, so then you would pay no tax. Under the new proposal, there is no medical deduction. So your mother, first of all, is penalized for paying the nursing home so much money, but then she's got to come up with more money to pay the government. So on 130000 at 25%, you're looking about $32,000. Yeah, more. Right. Right, because so there, is, how is, there that? is no deduction for medical. There's no deduction for employee business expenses. There's no deduction for... for um, for your uh, state and local income taxes, sales taxes, if you have a casualty loss. All these things were safety nets for average people to be able to reduce their tax yeah. liability because something happened. Gambling losses. Yeah, gambling losses. God forbid yeah. you're a gambler. Hey, we're going to take a short break with the news. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady. Give us a call, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on the cell phone. I'll see you in a minute. I, I, I think I'm Mr. Goliath, the tax lady from EG Tax, and we're talking taxes, and we're talking about the proposed changes and the tax laws, and we want to make it so you understand it, because when you hear the rhetoric coming from our politicians, of which probably I voted for, um, it they say, we're doubling the standard deduction, but they don't tell you they're taking away the personal exemptions. And for a family of five, how much is that, Chris? Over $20,000. $20, right. Twenty thousand seven fifty. So great, they're giving you an, they're giving you an, an extra eleven, but they're taking away twenty five or twenty. Uh, you know, so it, you gotta and you gotta read, you gotta put the pencil to the paper. You know. Yep. And hey, Tiff, uh, you were going to say yep. that people don't can forget if you want to text the number is three zero nine three zero. Somebody text in the continued attack of family by government. So again, it's three zero nine thirty, and I thought that was very yeah. apropos. All right, Mr. Tony's been waiting a long time. Hey, Mr. Tony, how can we help you, sir? Well, Esther, uh, I I told you what uh, what Trump was all about. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, Tony? I really believe that most of this package is good, except that when they attacked the middle and lower income pa families, that wasn't good. I have to tell you, I'm very disappointed, and it's really not a tax cut for middle and lower income people. And, and it's not reform of the tax code either. And no, because the 70,000 pages are still there. Yeah, well, there's 400 now, and tell me one legislator that read that. Uh, here's here's the thing. I'm waiting for my Christmas card from President Trump. He said he was going to have a big Christmas present. <laughs> I know. Here's my two questions. Yep. One, the 45,000 to 200,000 bracket, would that be the, the bracket that you would think has the most people in this country? Would that be where most people fit? No, most people fit. Right. Most people fit in the twelve percent. I can't hear that. Most most people fit in the twelve percent. Okay, well that's forty five and under. Right. Forty five. Well, no, it's actually ninety and under if you're married joint. Okay. How about the fact that uh, the um, AL alternative minimum tax is now taken away? Yeah, but the, the, Tony, it's taken away because nobody's going to itemize. Uh, itemized deductions are what tri triggered AMT right. most of the time. And dependents. So and dependents. So since there's no dependents that they're going to let you char uh, write off, or or itemized deductions, there's no AMT. Yeah, well, Trump in 2005 had to pay $31 million because of the ALT. Well, okay, but Tony... Uh, you, you know, uh, uh, you're preaching to the choir here. I mean, uh, the AMT 
and is eliminated because there's no itemized deduction, so to speak, and there's no personal exemptions. And I'm talking to the average taxpayer, okay? But there is no doubt about it when you're passing through a 14% tax cut on an S corporation making a million dollars, it's $140,000 tax savings. That's a big deal. And eliminating the estate taxes, that's a big deal. But not such a good Christmas present for moms and dads with two and three kids. And I do appreciate and, your And call. I think you're right. It's, it's, it's the backbone of America that's dealing with the grunt of this tax bill. So it just breaks my heart. Right. All right, okay. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on a cell phone. And we're going to go to John in Lancaster. Hi, Mr. John. How can we help you, sir? Yeah, could you tell me is uh, disability payments in New York State, is, is that taxable income? It all depends on what disability, like is it workers' comp? No, no, just a disability under an insurance. You, you got did hurt you, through did work. Did you pay the premiums or did your employer pay the premiums? The, the employer. Then it would be taxable yeah. to the federal and New York State. It would be taxable then. Yes. Mm -hmm. But remember, there's a standard deduction on the federal and the state. And until you come up past <laughs> that standard deduction and personal exemption as it's presently written, then there is no liability. So really it has to do with how much your other, how much your income is, John. All right, I understand that. But should I be receiving some kind of a statement then from the insurance? Did you just recently become disabled? Yeah. Yeah, they're going to send you a, a W-2. W a W-2. Uh, yeah. Uh, Just like when you're working, you right. get a W-2, you're going to get a W-2 from the disability company. Because a part of the uh, disability, they're deducting... Uh, F-I-C-A. Uh, Social Security. Yeah, right. And because that means it's wages. That, that's a good right. way to tell it's taxable. Right. <laughs> okay. The other question I got, I guess... Now, John, let me ask you something. How old are you? Oh, I'm 80-some years old. And you have a disability policy? You're still working? I was. <laughs> wow. Okay. Good for you. Good for you. I've got another question, too, for senior citizens. Yes, sir. On your standard uh, deduction, which you know, and I think a lot of seniors are into that, mm -hmm. if you were born before, or, yeah, before 1952, your standard deduction was calculated on a different basis than it would be the, if you were born after. Right, because you get the extra if you're single, fifteen fifty for being over sixty-five. But they're eliminating that, John. Uh, that's what I thought they brought. Right, they're eliminating that. I mean, that's part of the the proposed change. So seniors right now, uh, if they're filing a joint return, would get thirteen thousand plus eighty-three hundred plus twenty-five hundred which would put them well over the $24,000 standard deduction that they're proposing, but they are eliminating the uh, benefit for being over 65. Again, and this is just proposed. And I'm telling people this so that they would know, so when they talk to their politician and the politician says, we're doubling the standard deduction, you can say, you're taking away the personal exemptions and the over 65 exemption. Okay? Yeah. Well. Thank you, John. Thanks for calling. As, let's, as Cy let's, Sims would say, an educated consumer is our is best, best customer. customer. And we're going to go to Mr. John here, too. Hi, John. How's it going, Esther? I can't complain. What's happening? Okay. I got a quick question because I've heard a lot of mixed emotions, and I'm right in the same boat with you. I voted for a lot of these guys, and I'm totally disappointed. Um, I don't itemize or anything like that, but I have two children. Um, I don't have a mortgage. My house is paid off. How old are the kids? My kids are, well, my son is going to be turning seven. My daughter's going to be 10. And you're okay. still married? Yes. Okay. okay. So in your situation, you would have a, a $24,000 standard deduction. You would, and you'll get $1,600 for each of the kids. So it'd be $3,200. Okay. How much is your income approximately, John? Oh, my income has grown substantially this year. I, I actually landed a decent job, so I anticipate just probably a little over $47,000, and that's not including my wife's pay. All right. How much is hers? Hers? Well, she works part-time, you know, so I, uh, I'd say, you know, take uh, roughly 300 or take $400 and multiply that by 26, and that's going to be roughly her income. 
So about ten thousand dollars, right? Yeah, I'm around there. All right. So you guys are at fifth. Do you have any other source of income besides this? Um, no, not really. Okay, so you're going to be taxed on this. Is if it ta- passes now, okay? So you'd be paying at on thirty three thousand um, uh, at twelve percent. So you would pay taxes of about uh, thirty thirty nine sixty, yeah. right? Minus the thirty two hundred, so your actual tax bill would end up to be seven sixty. What would it have been now, Chris? At fifty seven less. 13 is 44, less another 16 is 28,000. So At 10, which would be 2,800, right? right? Plus. Minus 2,000. So your tax bill this year is 800. Your tax bill next year would be 760. So it would save you $40. Okay. All right. And so, but see now, if this is the thing. We will do this for people if they call us. We will work out the numbers. The thing is, when they tell you you're going to get the best tax gift and the best Christmas present ever, <laughs> it's a $40 Christmas gift. Yeah. Okay? For a lot of people, it's not even that. All right? All right. All right. Thank it's, you, Doug. You're going to get a lump of I mean, John, That's thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Yeah. So some people will do a little better. Some people would do a little worse. Some people do a lot worse. And some people will do uh, maybe $1,000 better. But that's pretty much how it how it's going to work out, right? The thing is, I just wanted people to know that it's not what it's being sold as. Right. Right? Right. All right, let's talk to Doug. Hey, Doug, how can we help you, sir? Hi, how are you, Esther? Good, good, good. Uh, I know this is only proposed, but I, I'm i over 65. Okay. I uh, I get uh, 1099. Okay. For most of my income, and my wife collects Social Security. All right, are you getting a pension? Ten ninety nine, no. Or dividends, or miscellaneous, or, mis- or are you self employed? Self employed. All right, so you're self employed. Okay. Between all the incomes I have coming in, I would say I'm roughly a hundred grand. All right, that's including Social Security, though, right? That's including everything. All right, so let's back off your Social Security. How much is your Social Security? Oh, mine, no, not very much. <laughs> I took it early, like a fool. But anyway, uh, my Social Security is probably. Mm, I'll say, and probably because you were self-employed, is why it's low. Well, how how much, <coughs> Doug, is your is Social Security per month? Uh, probably about five hundred, maybe a little, maybe five fifty. All right. So your Social Security is six thousand. How much is your wife's? Uh, she gets just under a thousand a month in Social Security. Yes, and then she has a. She has this great big pension plan that I think gives her forty-eight dollars a month. <laughs> all right, so she, so all right. Now, how much is your self-employment income? Uh, I have about uh, about sixty-nine, seventy thousand, roughly. Good for you. That's bottom line. Yeah, that's before I you know write off anything. No, no, no. Bottom line. After you take your expenses off, what do you end up with? That, that would be gross. So, what is your net? I don't know because it depends on how many things. Mm-hmm. Right, on what, an average year, though, well, I write off about twenty some thousand miles off my vehicle, uh, and then I've got uh, you know some other business expenses. All right, so are you ending up with like fifty thousand? Somewhere in that neighborhood. All right, so you're going to be taxed about. Uh, it it looks like he's going to do the eight. He's going to be over. He's going to do about nine thousand of that's going. So about sixty thousand dollars in gross. Him that that's going to stay the same either way. All right. And do you guys own your home? Yes, we have. Well, we have a mortgage. All right. And so, do you have large property taxes? Uh, not crazy. That between the school and the county, it's probably around fifty two hundred. All right, and and you said you have a mortgage, and you are both over 65, right? Yes. All right, so your standard deduction uh, this year, believe it or not, is going to be the same this year or last next year because they, uh, well, this year, because you get the 8,300 is is 24,000, be, and next year it's going to be 24,000 as well if he doesn't itemize. Right, right. So really, so there'll be no gonna, tax no, he'll, change. No, he'll pay 2% extra. Oh, because... Yeah. Right. Uh, because so the middle, the you're going to pay an extra 2% on 530. Mm, I'm doing point. the math here, 12. You're going to pay an extra $720 next year if it goes through. If it goes through. Right. 
Mm-hmm. Well, let's, if, let's hope it doesn't. But. <laughs> <laughs> and and the whole thing is, I'm not going. I wouldn't jump off a building for seven hundred and twenty dollars. But the thing is, it's not the don't, biggest don't Christmas lie. gift ever. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's hope that they have a little change of heart. I hope so too. Thanks, Doug, for calling. Maybe they put that in there so they have something to negotiate with them. Uh, well, I'm sure there's going to be negotiation between the House and the Senate. There's no doubt about it. But the but the Senate version was even less friendly to the children than the House version. The House version had 1,600 for kids under the age of 17. The Senate version was 1,000. So uh, we'll, we'll see, but I will keep you abreast. Thanks, Doug. I'm, yeah, it's Doug, right? Yeah. Thanks, Doug. I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930. 8030930, star 9030 on a cell phone. We're going to take a short break and we'll be back with your questions and comments on the other side. Hey, this is Esther Golius, the tax lady from EG Tax. Our phone number here at studio is 8030930, 8030930. Okay, somebody texted us in. They're marriage 61. They're working, making 32,000. Other job is part time job, 120 a month, pension of 1,015. Um, it, it looks like you don't itemize. All right, so presently your tax bill should be about 2510. Um, I mean, 2370 is what your tax bill would be this year. Next year, your tax bill would be 2510 uh, if this stuff ta- passes. So it's going to more. be because he, here's your the deal is what the sleeper is the 2% mm-hmm. increase on the bottom line. The, they went from a 10% bottom to a 12% mm-hmm. bottom. So 2% on $20,000 is $400. And that's what people don't realize is, is that. Uh, you got that two percent, and if it's fifty thousand, it's a thousand dollars, right? Mm-hmm. And so the more that you're that that uh, you're in that higher bracket. Okay, let's go to the phones, and we're going to go to who's? Let's see, Joe has been waiting the longest. Hi, Joe. How can we help you, sir? Hi. How are you? Good. I was good. I, for me, effective. I make average around one hundred and ten thousand. Okay. Tax rate historically has been when I, I have my brother-in-law do it because it's. I can't do it anymore. It's not too complicated. Is uh, eighteen to twenty percent is what my federal end of the deal. And I come very. And it's very hard. I have a mortgage, a second mortgage, and so on. But just to meet the standard deduction, if you're between me and my wife, because for instance, union dues and things, it never meets the threshold of right. The dramatic right, right. Split. So, I guess at, at this point, if, if the standard deduction, and I don't, my kids are all grown and all that. So would I end up paying less than the of 19% that I pay now federal, we're just talking? Okay. So on the first 90000 taxable, you're going to pay uh, 12%. The excess over ninety thousand dollars taxable under the new plan, you'd pay at twenty five percent. Your standard deduction now and personal exemption is twenty one three. Neither of you are over sixty five, are you? No. All right. So twenty one three. So on your hundred and ten thousand dollars income, you're going to be down to about uh, around that. He would pay the whole thing at twelve percent. Right. right. So about ten eight or Heard eleven. Me? I figured. What did I? Do? I did. I figured about almost eleven thousand dollars in taxes he'd pay under the new plan. Okay, but under this year, see, I don't have the, I don't have a quick finder. But what, what I'd like you to do is, if you go online, Joe, are you electronic? Yes. Go to egtax.com. There's ask the tax lady. Send me your particulars. I'll do the math, no charge, and send you the answer back. So you'll have exactly, exactly. Okay. Okay. Because I don't, ha- I don't have the tax chart for this year. But you would, his liability next year would be about eleven thousand. Yep. All right. So that would be less. That would well. You can just look it up. Whatever. Take a look at your tax return this year. Next year's liability is going to be up around eleven thousand if this passes. If it goes through, yeah. And oh. I just, I just sometimes it's frustrating because I know a lot of people that have you know kids, and I know it's a cost of fortune to raise them. I've had them, but mm-hmm. they seem to at around the fifty, forty, fifty thousand with kids. They get more money back than they pay in. Oh, that's absolutely true. There, it, it's a refund of that. We have a welfare system built built into the tax code. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, a- absolutely. But I will tell you, you're going to find. I think you're going to find in this situation, it's almost going to be flat for you this year versus le- last year. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Joe. 
All right, let's go back to the phones, and we got uh, Annette. Hi, Annette. How can we help you, ma'am? My husband passed away this oh. August, and we have a grantor's trust. Okay. Uh, um, our children are the trustees, mm-hmm. and we I have been paying the tax on the trust, Okay. but it's been minimal mm-hmm. because most of it was deferred. Mm-hmm. Now that he's passed away, within five years, we have to take out the total um, annuities. Uh-huh. The taxable amount is over sixty thousand dollars. Okay. So if I take out, say, twenty three thousand this year, what am I going to have to pay in taxes? Hmm. Okay. So you know what we need to do, Annette. I mean, it's way too complicated to do over the telephone right here. So call me at the office or email me at egtax.com. And then, I, because I need to know all of your income this year, like your your Social Security and everything, and find out if we can itemize for you. Because I believe 2017 is going to stay the same. So many of the things that may not be deductible next year will be deductible this year. So we could take a look and see and if we couldn't front end load some itemized deductions for you if you're taking some of the money out of that trust this year. But uh, again, go to egtax.com, ask the tax lady, click on ask a question, email me the stuff and I will I will get back to you right away. Or call us on Monday. Or call them. Us, yeah. Call these guys on Monday, 632-7886. There's no charge. Be very happy to help you. Do it right over the phone. Okay. 632-7886? Yep. Okay, great. Thank you, dear. Bye-bye. Sorry to hear about your husband. Okay, and let's go to um, Chris. Hi, Chris. How can we help you? Hi, Esther. How are you today? I'm good. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I'm married. Yep. Household income gross is about 215 Okay. Um, Got children? Yeah, four children. Four children? (laughs) Isn't that great? So there's six of you there. Is any of the kids over the age of 17? No. Okay. Um, We have rental properties that I actually structure on a Schedule C, just put it into its own business and do profit from business and loss so I can write off the most. So I usually show about a ten dollars to $15,000 loss there. Okay, you can't. Well... You can't. I mean, you can't. I mean, uh, I, I mean, you, uh, you you may do that because they haven't know. audited you yet, but you can't structure rental property as just that. Uh, this is an aside, okay? But you, let's keep going. Let's. All right. So we got the. I got the personal exemptions and uh, how, your loss on your business is how much, Chris? About ten to fifteen thousand. Okay, which you're not allowed to do, but we'll we'll play the game. Okay, go on. And then, and then the big thing is, I'm in sales, so I write off about thirty thousand miles a year. Oh, oh well, that's gone. That's out the window. Fifteen thousand dollars a mileage. That, that's out the window. Okay. So, do you know what your itemized deductions were, Chris, last year? Um, I probably ended up at thirty. Thirty thousand. All right. So that's one seventy minus twenty five because your personal exemptions are twenty five. Uh, so I'm doing my site. I got my shoes off. I'm doing all the ciphering I can. All right. So he'd have $145,000 taxable this year, Chris. All right. Okay. That that would be this year. And now next year, uh, all things being equal, uh, all you're going to have is the $24,000 standard deduction. Uh, unless, because most of your itemized deductions are probably uh, 2106 stuff, right? Employee business expense. Yep. And and then my mortgage and my property taxes. Yeah. Well, how much how much are your property taxes? Six thousand. And how about your mortgage interest? Probably eight or nine. Yeah. So you won't be able to itemize. So your ta- his taxable income next year will be 176 thousand. So uh, yeah. So the, on the first ninety. He's going to pay a hundred uh, ten eight, and on the next uh, eighty six eighty six, you're going to pay twenty five percent of that. Twenty one so, five. So that's twenty one five. So your tax bill next year would be uh, thirty two thousand three hundred dollars. <throat> so that's a hurt, right? Yeah, I think so. Uh huh. I there's phone number. Chris Collins is to call. <laughs> make sure you fo- make some phone calls, Chris. Okay. All right. Thank yeah, you. The people for with a twenty one oh six is just the, terrible. The extra six hundred dollars in child tax credit won't come into play with yeah. him because he's phased in, out of the right, child tax credit. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, and then June, how can we help you, my dear? Hi, Esther. I uh, wanted to take into a quick question in reference to Social Security. Is it going to be taxed as the full amount, or are they still? No, that, it's good. that part, they haven't changed. Remember, there's like 77,000 pages of tax law. They aren't touching anything, really, but personal exemptions, the and tax itemized. rates, and the standard They changed deduction. page two, not page yeah, one. Yeah, that's right. Okay? Understand. Mm-hmm. All right, dear. Is there any place we can take and go online and take and get some of the information as to what they are trying to change and what they want? Oh, yeah. Uh, do we have this, po- this posted on our website? We can no. get it up there yeah, on we'll, Monday. We'll post it on our website at egtax.com. And by the way, we have a new app coming out, uh, the EG Tax app, and it's going to have all the tax stuff and interactive stuff, and, and uh, you can use it for keeping track of your mileage, and you can keep track of all your business expenses, and that's coming out in the next Hopefully week within or so. the week. Okay, June? Thank you, dear. And Kathy, how can we help you, my dear? Yes, Esther, I was just wondering, are all these things going to take place on our 2017? I don't think so. I don't think they can do that. If they do, maybe the tax re- tax year will end in June or July, God forbid. But I don't think they can do it retroactively. I think we're looking at tax returns filed in 2019. But we don't, but if it's Something that you're concerned about, talk to your representative and your senator, okay? Okay. Thank you, sweetie. So much. All right, bye-bye. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady. During the week, if you want us to do your computation, we're very happy to do it because smart people know a lot more better than people that are just Educated. hoping and praying. I mean, the truth of the matter is some people are going to do a little better, some people are going to do a little less, and some are gonna, people are going to do a lot be- worse. So give us a call at 632-7886. Visit us online at egtax.com. Have a great week. God bless you. Bye-bye.